right, hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Rob here with Smirking Gun Reviews. We're back to deep dive back into Doom Patrol. We're on Season 1, Episode 9. It is called Jane Patrol. I guess you could call this a two-parter, um, seeing as that it continues what happened immediately after the events of the last episode. But they kind of all do, but this one really feels like a two-part episode. Um, and we get, like way more into Jane's uh, backstory and why she is the way she is. Uh, Cliff gets a breakthrough. It's a more contained episode. We're not following a million different plots. Um, and it's one of the best episodes they've done. Um, so full spoilers, we haven't seen this episode. But it's still, you know, I gotta, I gotta just say the same things. Like, after reviewing Harley Quinn yesterday and reviewing nine episodes of this show and Hearing from other people, like uh, from Gino on the real Gino, about how he talks about Titans, the swearing—it just, like I said, it just—it's—it's it's bringing the show down. And again, coming from a guy who swears a lot in my personal life, I, I just—that's part of my language. I try to, I try to curb it a little bit here, um, unless I feel like if it comes out, it's because I'm, you know, like it's something I. I don't know. Like people, people have different views on swearing. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna go into all of them here. But if the show had a problem, it's it's the writing, and the dialogue, and and swearing for the sake of swearing. Sometimes the swearing in here feels proper, but it loses its impact when you just overdo it. Like even Karen. The, char the character of Karen, the personality of Karen, she wasn't swearing when we first introduced her. her. She was the prim and proper romantic comedy lead. She kept her language to that le that type of personality. And now that she's like back in the underground and even near the end of her episode, she just started swearing like a sailor. And, and it was like, it wasn't, it didn't follow that character and a lot of the people down there in the underground, everybody's swearing. And you could say, well, maybe it's because of what happened to Jane, which really uh, is Kay Olivia. She became Jane, and there was also Miranda. And then the rest of the you know personalities started coming out. Um, it's so to just finish up that part. Like this show has some amazing ideas. This show has a lot of great imagination. Like, look at this thing. We go inside her head and we get to actually see what the physical manifestations of her personalities look like. Very much like a David Holler kind of thing. David Holler being Legion, uh, the mutant uh, Charles Xavier's son, who, when you go into his mind in his comics, um, all of his personalities look different and have different traits and uses and powers, just like Jane. And so it's really, really cool. But then it is undercut by the writing. And not by the writing as in the story. It's the dialogue. These people talk like 14-year-olds that, you know, just their parents went away for a weekend and they, they, they get to just say whatever they want without really understanding what they're saying. It's just, it, if you know what I'm saying, it's like a bunch of kids that when their parents aren't around the way they talk. You know, you ever listen to kids when the adults aren't around? It's pretty fucking terrible. <laughs> South Park is, like, really accurate about that kind of thing. So, but that being said, this is a great episode if you can push past all that, 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 that rotten dialogue. And not all the dialogue is rotten. It's just mostly when it comes from Cliff and Jane... And people getting whenever they get mad in this in this in the show, which is a lot. It's like everybody's just go-to thing is to just cuss people out. So the episode though starts in Arkansas, 1957. So Jane's been around since 57, and her character, you'd say she's probably about like between like six, around six like six years old, I'd say maybe six and between six and eight. So that means that she was born in like 1950, 1951. Still doesn't explain why she doesn't age. It just doesn't. Uh, hopefully we get answers to that. Um, but 
this whole thing, I mean, come on, it's it's real simple. It's real simple. She was sexually assaulted by her father. And it traumatized her into uh, splitting off all these personalities. And I'm not making light of it when I say, oh, it's simple. It's just that this has been something that's been torturing her for, let's say, okay, so like 57, right? 67, 77, 87, 97, 7, 17... 60 some odd years she's been torturing herself with this and hasn't been able to come to terms with it 60 years and nobody could help her it's you know and I guess with the, the other personalities it doesn't help so this all comes down because her dad just did some terrible terrible things to her and it's like like I said, I don't want to oversimplify it or sound like I don't care. It's just the character acts like she doesn't know. Like, and that she just hasn't confronted this in 60 years. She's been making herself crazy when, in the end, what happens is just Cliff going there, making the, ma like another man going there and helping her. I feel like, is it just because Niles never fully got there with her? Um,. He was kind of like, he'd come and go and come and go, and Cliff was trying to be more of a constant in her life. Um, maybe it's because she was in a hospital, but it's like, well, then why didn't Niles get her out sooner? You know, he took her away. I... So, Jane, we're introduced to all these really, really cool-looking personalities. They're all really, really cool. And I honestly now wish that when she changed personalities, they would actually manifest physically. I think that would be really dope. Um, rather than just hearing her speak. But there's something to be said. You know, you, you don't want to pay a million actors, I guess, to be in the roles. But now that I know that Hammerhead's a bald, angry woman... <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I didn't really know what Hammerhead... Who, what, who, what Hammerhead looked like. I honestly didn't know they really looked like anything. Um, except for the ones like the Flame On person. Well, Jane, Jane's down there, and she won't go up. She won't go up because she doesn't see the point, you know, and everything sucks up there. But it's like, well, everything sucks down here, too. You're in an underground subway system, walking through terrible memories. You're telling me that the terrible me hanging out in your terrible mind is better than being out there when... I guess it's the hope. I guess it, up there there was hope with Cliff and Niles and them, and then Niles left, and then Cliff said some mean things, and now she's re retrograded or re regressed, regressed back into her mind, where she doesn't want to go out and confront it. And so this is this is supposed to be Jane's big breakthrough episode, and, and, and in a way it does happen. Her, her, her personalities are talking about that somebody needs to go up there, we need balance, we need equilibrium, but she gets the driver of the train that takes you back up. It's a, it's an interesting uh, way to, to say you're coming out of unconsciousness. But she gets the driver to sabotage the train so that she can go wandering through a lost memory that nobody knows who it belongs to. It's this nice serene lake um, where she meets one of the other personalities that tells her that yeah nobody knows who this is meanwhile they're trying to in the in the conscious world figure out how to wake Jane up and Vic comes up with the magic school bus idea which I don't really know what that means because I never watched the magic school bus I know of it uh, it's, it's something about he says like get real small and go inside her brain and Larry kind of snaps at him about you know you know getting on board with the weird and the impossible and his other immediately comes out, shuts him up, connects robots with Jane's brain, makes an electrical impulse connection to each other, and Brendan Fraser returns in the flesh inside Jane's mind as he tries to navigate his way to Jane to get her out, which ends up putting him in brain jail, <laughs> where we meet another cool character called Jack Straw, which I really want to know more about that person. Just like I want to know more about Black Anna right here. He's like, that's such a great design. And again, all the designs for all the personalities were fantastic. Um, and, you know, Cliff's down there blaming himself. But he's, he's, it's misplaced blame. But he's really doing his, he's, he's 
trying to make up for like his own life and his own daughter being gone. So he's putting that all on himself when it's really not his fault. And again, I wrote, why does Karen swear so much now? You know, she's like when she's talking about the like romance stick to stuff, she suddenly goes right back to the way that personality is. And then it's all F this and F that. And it's just like, geez, Louise, man. She doesn't talk like that. Her personality doesn't talk like that. Sisters, the three-headed, like, Sears, another crazy design where they tell her to go to the well. But that Miranda went to the well and never came back. So something bad happened there. Um, the personality of Penny uh, helps Cliff get out of jail uh, and into one of... Uh, Jane's memories. I, and I almost want to start calling her Kay at this point now that we know that that's the original personality. But I guess nobody else knows that. So it's just safe to, safer to just call her Jane. We find out that Miranda was a primary and she went to the well and never came back. Um, which then we get to Black Annis who lets her go through after being really creepy and now walking around with these Wolverine Freddy Krueger claws. Um, but they get to the memory of her talking to Cliff, meeting Hammerhead, and her painting, and he didn't understand. He doesn't understand why that memory is down there and the bad, dark stuff. And she's like, "It's because you gave her hope," which pushes him even further to follow her again because she needs him. She needs somebody to kind of be standing there with her, proving that they, you know. As much as she wants to keep pushing people away, Cliff keeps trying. And that's what Niles was, was doing in a, in a way. But, you know, Niles being Niles is getting pulled into this whole Mr. Nobody thing and this bigger picture. Um, but I knew it. I figured it out, like, before... As soon as we opened the door to... When Jane opens the door to her youngest, her original self, where it all started, was that the puzzle was the lake. It was that last great memory before everything went dark and her dad started diddling her, which is awful. And that's where she goes to, and that's where other personalities go to when they want to just feel, like, safe. And uh, it is. It's, it's really on the nose, but it's also really clever how they do all this. Um, and so Cliff, though, he tracks her down. He goes to... Uh, this black Annis character who starts slashing him up saying no man can come through and he starts realizing and accepting the fact uh, that he's not a man anymore that he is the robot man and that he can't he's not Cliff Steele anymore and in order to help Jane he needs to get rid of that and accept the fact of who he is that this person that he's seeing in her brain is not the real him anymore and so he's able to literally shed the humanity off of himself, or at least the, the flesh, so that he can be there when, when she really needs him. Which, where she's, you know, getting ready to fall into this well, probably get rid of this side of the personality that could save her self. Uh, and the puzzle pieces all come out, and it's a pretty cool effect uh, for a TV, you know, budget. Uh, and it's her dad, and it, it all, it's a little simplistic, I, it, it, I'll say this, because Robot, like, gets ripped up, and she just kind of stands there, and it's like, not him, not, you know, not him too, you're not taking him away from me, so, like, Miranda was taken, and probably put down in that well, and that personality was destroyed, possibly, but she just kind of screams at him, and it's, like, all over, and this, this negative memory just kind of fades away and goes back into the well, and it's a little underwhelming and it feels un incomplete and not really just yelling at your memory that I'm not afraid of you when she she sounds more terrified than ever but it's supposed to mean that she has this breakthrough as well and they all wake up and what we see is that, that something happened between Victor and Rita during this whole thing which I guess we'll probably get an answer to next episode um, I don't know man the little hanky panky going on between Rita. That's probably not what happened. But <laughs> you never know. Um, but they come out of it, you know. And 
they're like, well, she's back, great, and and you know what happened, and he's Cliff is like, well, Robot is like, it's not really my story to tell, but she's back, and that's what's important. The problem is, is that as soon as she gets by herself and lays down in bed, and you think everything's fine, then the voice comes back, sweet, sweet baby, and it's like, well, then she didn't fix, you know, nothing was fixed. She just came out of it. And so, like, I, I feel like while they might have made some progress, and I, maybe that's what they're trying to say is that there is no easy fix to this. That maybe, you know, yeah, she got out, but it's still going to be a long time. You know, of course. Of course it will be a long time. You never, and, and to say that it will ever go away, I guess, it, it would be stupid to say. It's a matter of, like, how much can she get past it to survive in this world. Um, learning to live with that awfulness that happened to her, and that's I needed this episode for for the character because it was becoming just her. Not to say that I don't sympathize, but the 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 gratingness of her personality was becoming just way too much. Because everybody's got this like grating personality of just, uh, 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 just like so intense and in your face and always swearing. Everybody just about on the show, that it's it's a lot. It's uh, this show is just constantly bashing you over the head, and I don't like with just in your face like attitudes. Like big, angry personalities just screaming at you constantly. And so, hopefully, you know, now that it looks like Cliff has made some more groundbreaking in his own self, and Jane is maybe on her way to rec her own recovery. But man, I mean, I gotta tell you, this this show's gotta be like way more intense than Titans. I mean, Titans seems, sounds like, you know, your typical teenage superhero show where they go through some stuff this this is like psychological man this is really like heavy heavy stuff and it, that's one of the reasons why I've stuck with it because I would probably have given up on this show because of the writing and the dialogue alone if it wasn't for the cool ideas and how they do it I don't think I'd, have, I'd be continuing with the show at all so anyway, that's that's Jane Patrol. Really, really good stuff. Again, had bogged down by bad dialogue and too much swearing. So and and, and like I said, the acting is just really good. I didn't know Diane Guerrero was this good at, 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 at being an actress. To be honest with you, because all I ever knew her from really was Orange is the Black, and she was just kind of, you know, a, just a one piece of a whole. And then her character disappears at the end of the, you know, during the final season. You never see hear from her again. So it's nice to see her really get to stretch as an actress. And I can't say that enough because, I mean, she's one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. But she can also act her ass off. So, anyway. We'll be back next week with, I believe it's called Hair Patrol. It's episode 10. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We got six episodes left before the finale, so that's six more weeks. So, uh, if you liked this review, please hit the like button, comment, share, subscribe, hit the bell for all notifications. You can find me on Twitter at reviews underscore gun. Also, we got the hashtag, we'll never monetize. I'm starting that up to just kind of to let everybody know that this channel will, now that we've hit a thousand subscribers, um, I know people monetize usually when they hit that uh, that milestone, but I'm not interested in, uh, in monetizing because then I have to worry about advertising and ad revenue and whether or not my videos are safe for this or, you know, advertiser friendly, and I'm not interested in that. I want to, I want everybody to know that like my channel will always be my channel and any donations that I get would be through like you know like I don't know if we you know like through live stream super chats which I I'm usually against but it's like I'm going to activate them uh, just because if somebody wants to give to my channel who am I to say no um I just don't want the purpose of my live streams to be about super chats do you know what I'm saying and I also have my PayPal and my Patreon. But I've put, I've put all that on the back burner. And I should probably put this in a separate video. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, we aren't talking about Doom Patrol anymore. So, 
Anyway, this is Rabbit Smirk again with you saying we'll be back next week with more Doom Patrol. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video.